Hi my dear folks, this is Alina and today I would like to talk about one of my most favorite subjects, motivation. Not only artistic motivation, but personal motivation, inspiration and how it can all be impacted by your environment, your friends, your family, your colleagues and yeah, those people who surround you in which circumstances you live and work and how all of that is important for your future. Someone once said that you are an average of all your friends, family, colleagues. So pretty much all of those people who surround you, if you would kind of take all their qualities and find an average, that hypothetical person would probably be similar to you. And we can derive that if your friends and family and colleagues are not the people who inspire you, and they kind of their environment and the fact that they are surrounding you doesn't motivate you to reach um, bigger goals to advance as a professional and as a human being then maybe it's a good time to actually think of widening your circle and looking for those people who would cause this effect on your future behavior. So in order to make your life better, you gotta surround yourself with the people who have a similar lifestyle to what you want to have. By lifestyle, I mean everything, like your health uh, situation, your job situation, your geographical situation, things like that. So like all the aspects of your life that matter to you. Of course, it's always useful to write things down, to analyze all these aspects and to look for those people who might serve as an example in a way. And of course, it doesn't have to be in person. There are tons of groups and apps and uh, videos and uh, whatnot, right? So you can find yourself an online community of the like-minded people or of the people who you want to be like in a way. So it could be some people who have reached something that you haven't yet but you are on your way and you wanted to see more about their life and about how they make decisions how they are thinking so yeah in order to reach bigger and cooler goals it's very important to look for people who have similar aspirations on the other hand if you are surrounded by people who are unhappy, who are always complaining, and who don't want to change that about their lives. Think whether that is really beneficial to you. If your environment consists of individuals who don't want to optimize their lifestyle the same way or in a similar way as you do, think also maybe they would actually need your help in a way if those people are very close to you, like your family, for example. Maybe you could do something to make their life better. But of course, if you have tried that several times and it doesn't work, and if they kind of, you know, enjoy being miserable, which is weird to me personally, but maybe there are people like this, you know. Um, think of whether it's really worth to kind of try to put your strategy into their lives. Maybe it's not gonna work for them. and. I mean, yeah, of course, if they don't have any desire to improve their situation, then no one can do that for them. Very unfortunately, but we have to start everything about our lives ourselves, right? If they are really steady as a rock, just move on. Because you have only got so much time in your life and it would be a huge mistake to waste it. Use it for something good instead. and. Don't let them waste your energy and take it away from you because energy is a limited resource as well as the willpower you need for the motivation. Speaking of willpower, it's only gonna get you through the beginning. I mean, we all know that, right? We all have started learning your language, working out, maybe eating better and whatnot. But the trick here is to actually either have a very, very strong trigger. For example, there is one famous language school that makes sprints and if you miss one class, you're gonna lose a bunch of money and if you attend 90 classes in a row one hour per day, you're getting all your money back. That's how I learned a few languages. But yeah, 
that's not the topic of today's video. The point is to either make it necessary for yourself, but that's also only gonna serve you for some short amount of time. But if you want to really implement something new into your lifestyle, you gotta make it comfortable. You gotta make it work in a way that you won't be able to live without it, you know? It has to feel natural. It has to make you feel better in all the possible ways. It has to be like a drug, but in a good way. We have this funny ability to become alike to the people we communicate, to, especially when we communicate to them a lot. I have noticed uh, that people copy movements, language intonations maybe, some voice inflections and whatnot, and it's unconscious, it's just, it works this way that we tend to mimic some things without even noticing it. That's why it's also important to uh, think about who surrounds you, because besides these uh, things I just mentioned, we tend to mimic some moods, some decision-making processes perhaps, so the ways of thinking. If we speak to someone a lot or listen or hear someone a lot, we might kind of grasp their way of living even, in a way, right? You feel the charisma, you feel uh, the mindset of the person. So if it's someone who influences you in a better way, stick to them and think how you can use this opportunity to actually learn their ways of thinking. Of course, I'm not saying that we have to copy other people's decisions and whatever they do, but one interesting thing to note is that we can use something that we noticed about their behavior that might be good for us. And it might be helpful to know about the ways of thinking of these people and how their decisions are triggered. For example, if you're an artist and you are surrounded by those alike, you might have a lot of creative ideas that you discuss with your colleagues. However, you might not have any single clue about how to run your artistic career, how to manage it. And if you have someone that you communicate to and they're from some business field, some completely different field, maybe they're entrepreneurs, maybe they are, I don't know, working in, in the, finance or whatever, you might actually learn something about how they work, how they think about their kind of a living philosophy that they use for, for their own life and, and business and whatnot. And you might think, oh, that's actually a cool idea. I didn't think about that. Why don't I try to adapt it and see how it could benefit me, my career, my profession and just myself as an individual. Unfortunately, as artists, we are not really taught uh, management, like self-management at schools. At least I wasn't. And when I was studying at conservatories, those things were barely taught, maybe as electives, but not really as part of the required curriculum, which I think has to change. Maybe now it's getting better. I, I really hope so. But in my times, it was tough uh, and we would come out of conservatories like a lot of my colleagues are or were in the same situation. We would be able to practice our art, perform, whatnot, but we had no single idea what to do with this, how to actually make it go further in our lives. But I um, talked to some friends who come from completely different backgrounds, they work in different fields, and they thought, oh, they are thinking in a different way. Why don't I learn from them? Why don't I just embrace the ways of thinking that are more global in a way? And it really helped me. It kind of opened up a bunch of boundaries I've had before because nobody told me that I could do all these things and actually I could and I can and I do them. So there is a whole world of things to learn for everyone, from every profession. An exchange is always cool. And I encourage you to go ahead and just find some people who are gonna motivate you in this way from who you can learn. So the surrounding is everything here because it's gonna trigger the ability to become alike. I mean alike in a positive way, maybe treated more as inspired. I'm not telling you to copy anything or anyone. So I vouch for surrounding 
ourselves with the people who are inspiring and who help us without really doing anything, but just with their existence and their being who make us want to become better professionals, better human beings, better people. A short reminder that I offer consultations for artists who want to organize their artistic projects, jumpstart their future, who are maybe starting to look into writing grant proposals, who are in the beginning of this, or if you have had experience that was not successful, you can read about my experience below. I'm including all the links and uh, the sign-up form for a consultation. Hit the like button if this was useful or inspiring in any way. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell, stay in touch, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.